All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda tonight? We just have a couple of recognitions that will be added to the mock trial team and the presidential scholar, which was not on the original one, I don't think. Okay. We also, I think, have a letter we want to send to the state legislature. Okay. If you could add that. So we will add that um, under um, new business. We'll do item F. Anything else? Mary? I'm going to pull um, policy JLCA for first reading because we haven't finished with it. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we will move on with um, approval of school board minutes. Uh, We'll start with the regular meeting, Tuesday, April 12th, 2011. Do I have a motion for that? Michael. Uh, I move that we approve the uh, school board minutes uh, from the Tuesday, April 12th, 2011 regular meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Kathy? Any discussion? All those in favor? All right, and we'll move on to the minutes from the special business meeting, Tuesday, April 26, um, 2011. Do I have a motion, please? I move for the approval of the minutes from the special business meeting, Tuesday, April 26, 2011. And a second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, let's move on to comments by student reps. Do we have any student representatives here? Oh, I Hi, I'm Gabby. And I'm Eva, and we're representatives of the Middle School Student Council. Firstly, 8th grade's Project Citizen was recently completed. Project Citizen is a very long, in-depth group project on an important topic such as bullying, drugs, and alcohol abuse. Well, Everyone did a great job. Last week, the 6th graders went to Chewaki. They had a blast. There were a few storms, but mostly it was sunny. Um, recently, go well, going on right now is the NWAs. Right now they're going smoothly. This week was 7th, last 8th, and next 6th. In a few weeks, the 5th graders are going to Boston to do the Freedom Show. Also, they will be taking a field trip to GMRI. Um, May 13th is Teacher Appreciation Day, and many classes are doing projects for their teachers. Also, the band and chorus concerts are coming up. Band, 7th and 8th grade band is May 17th, and 5th through 8th grade chorus is May 18th. Upcoming events. May 30th is Memorial Day. Due to that, we have no school. June 3rd is the 8th grade barbecue. June 4th, Arts Night and see Pasta with a Purpose. June 7th is Step Up Day. June 14th is 8th grade celebration. June 17th, school is out half day. Thank you and good night. Thank you, ladies. Um, I do not see our high school students here, so... Um, we will move on to comments from the public on agenda items. Are there any comments from the public on items that are on the agenda? Seeing none, um, we will move on to recognition. And we have some um, really um, interesting items here. Uh, could we start with Noelle Webster, please? Hello, Noelle. <laughs> Um, my name is Noel Webster. Um, I recently got awarded the 
American Vision Medal, and my piece is going to Carnegie Hall, I guess. So, oh, <laughs> here that's it is. beautiful. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's in photography, and I was one of the runners in the state to go on to Carnegie, and I got in. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Well, well, Mr. Shedd couldn't be here tonight, but he wrote something that I would like to read. Um, he says, Noel, a junior, is one of Cape Elizabeth High School's most talented, creative young artists. Her art teachers have been incredibly impressed with the growth that she has shown over the past three years, finding and nurturing her artistic voice. Noel entered several works in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards competition, which is a national competition. Her work received multiple recognitions. Her red photo received a Silver Key Award, as did her charcoal figure studies. Her fireworks photo received an honorable mention, as did her continuous line wire drawing of a girl and another continuous line drawing. Noel's top award was for photograph, stars, stripes, and shadows. That photograph received a gold key award and was nominated for further consideration as an American Vision nominee. Noel's work will be, dis will be on display in the World Financial Center in New York City from June 2nd to the 19th. Noelle and her family will be attending a national award ceremony at Carnegie Hall on Tuesday, May 31st. American Vision nominees represent the work of the most creative, most ambitious, and highest achieving young artist in the country. We are proud of Noelle for displaying the creativity and artistic passion that has earned her such well-deserved recognition. Thanks. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Any comments from the board? No. Can you bring the push that? Oh yeah, that one more time. That's beautiful. Get that up. That's it's really, really beautiful. beautiful. Thanks. Congratulations, Thanks. Noel. Thank you very much for your time. I'm glad we have you for another year. <laughs> we'll see what happens next year. Okay. Our second recognition is. Our Pond Cove Principal for the Day, Julia Trowbridge. <laughs> I'm looking forward, I always look forward to hearing about this. You're good? Okay. She can handle that, I think. Just stand right up there. <laughs> Want to just do it like that, then? Can we hear from here? If she just stands here? Sure. Okay, you can sure. there. Want me to start it? Julia dictated some of this to me, so this is her report about, what, can you introduce yourself? This is Julia Trowbridge, she's in first grade in, in Mrs. Hollowell's room. And here's what she wrote today in her computer. I was principal of Pond Cove today. I got to school at, what time did you get to school? 8.30 on the bus? I went to my class first. I asked the custodian to get me a desk for my computer in the principal's office. Then I checked my email. You had some, didn't you? Then I went to class to see if kids liked the new rules, which were chewing gum, wearing hats, you could carry stuffed animals, and you can wear your pajamas. And so could staff members, I wanted to add that. The kids liked the rules, and they asked for longer recess and no homework, and I said, yes. I visited kindergarten, grade one, grade two. I checked to make sure the teachers had their ID cards. Can you show the school board this? If they didn't have their ID cards, she kind of busted them and made them wear a temporary ID. Okay. Then I had my snack and recess. I visited grade four and solved a problem in grade three because a teacher needed help with a little unruly classroom, right? They're excited about the stuffed animals. <laughs> I saw the middle school lunch, which was noisier, a little noisier than prom code, <laughs> but clean. And I walked through the kitchen and met people in the middle school. When I got back to Pond Cove, I went to see the afternoon kindergarten classes. Then I checked my email again. The third grade teacher told me the problem was solved. At the end of the day, I made an announcement to the whole school to remind everyone that there's no homework tonight. 
And we heard a cheer go right through the building. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have questions for the principal? Anything? Did you have a good day today? Is that a yes? Yeah. Was it an easier day than yesterday or a harder day? Is it easier to be the principal and be a first grade student? It's easier to be a student. Oh, I would agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Julia, thank you very much for being principal. You did a great job. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank else? you. Thank you, Julia. Oh, Julia, one more question. Do you, do you think you'd want to be principal when you grow up? <laughs> well, thank you for doing that job. That's a lot of responsibility and administrative organization. It sounds like you did a great job. All right, we will move on. I guess on. it shows, Tom, that you can be replaced by a first grader. Yeah, there's some grievances that are still on the desk. Nice job, Julia. Um, we will move on to um, the mock trial team. If they'll come up. Let me read what Mr. Shedd has written here about you guys, and then I'll turn the floor over to you. Um, it's important uh, uh, for him to write this up. He's extremely proud of the accomplishments of this group. Last week, 10 members of the Cape Elizabeth High School mock trial team, which won the state championship, attended the national competition in Phoenix, Arizona. The team, with only one senior competing and featuring several freshmen and sophomores, earned 34th place, a tremendous accomplishment. Our freshmen and sophomore competitors were probably some of the youngest competitors in Phoenix since most schools sent only juniors and seniors to this national event. This year, I had the joy, this is Mr. Shedd talking, of working with and watching the team grow from a group of very raw lawyers and witnesses into a team that well earned the state championship. It is important for the board and community to be aware of the amount of work that went into the preparation of the trial for the national competition. The trial materials, nearly 100 pages in length, were received on April 1st. The competition began six weeks later. In between was the April school break. From April 1st to the competition, the team met nearly 20 hours per week on top of many hours of preparation at home. I want to comment, and this is Mr. Shedd talking, I want to comment on Mary Page's leadership of this team. I have to believe that she probably put in at least 200 hours on this project on top of her day job as a full-time social studies teacher. I was personally unable to keep up with the pace of the practices this spring, having to drop out the last two weeks, leaving school board member David Hillman to help in my absence. Mary's commitment to this team is absolutely incredible, and the growth and talent of these students is fantastic. I'm very proud of them. Those are very kind words. Um, I also want to recognize the attorney coach who's been our lead attorney coach since 2004, um, Dick O'Meara. He couldn't be here tonight, and he puts in countless hours as well. And Dick accompanied the team, along with, um, as did I, to Phoenix. And we had a very enjoyable experience. But I'll let the children, the young people, I should say, um, introduce themselves and tell you what um, roles they had on the team. My name is Chelsea Wynott. I'm a sophomore and I've been on the mock trial team for two years. At Nationals, I did a direct examination, a cross-examination, and I also played the role of a witness. My name is Katie Page. I'm a junior. And along with Emily Muscat, we were the team captains. And we both had directs, crosses, and the, we did the closing arguments. My name is Dorothy Janik. I'm a freshman, and I did a direct examination, a cross-examination, and I was also a witness. My name is Olivia Bayline, and I was a senior. I did a cross-examination, a direct examination, and an opening statement. And one of our team members, Josie Barth, isn't here today. She did a cross-examination and a direct examination. Oh, and an opening, I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Kevin Hare. I'm a freshman. I kept time because it's a time competition so that trials don't run incredibly long. And also on our team was Will McCarthy, who's a junior, and he played 
two witnesses, an expert hydrogeologist and a tribal chief. My name is Jack Tierney. I'm a freshman, and I was an alternate on the team. Not uh, here right now is uh, Claire Muscat. She played uh, two witness roles. My name is Brian Tanner. I'm a freshman, and I was an alternate for the national competition. And on behalf of the entire team, we'd really like to thank um, CEIF and the High School Parents Association for their generous donations to our team, because we wouldn't have been able to go if it weren't for them. And we'd like to thank Mrs. Muscat as well, who, uh, Dr. Muscat, for joining us she on our trip. She was a chaperone on the team as well. Great, great. Any comments from the board? How high do I have to raise it? Okay. Um, I'd like to make a few comments. Um, I, I'm surprised Jeff only gave me two weeks of, I swear I spent more than two weeks helping them. But um, I, I, I want to congratulate you on your uh, tremendous accomplishment. I was following it on a Twitter feed from uh, Dick O'Meara. I don't think people realize how much time these kids put into it. When I was doing it with them, um, I, I think I put in around 40 hours a week. And these kids did it over a six-week period, um, far longer than any sports practice, far longer than any other extracurricular activity. It's physically and intellectually demanding, and uh, um, I, I thought they did a tremendous job. And I, I wanted to uh, also compliment them on their, at least in, in when I was with them, um, I found them to be very uh, hardworking, very receptive, um, and unlike the, when I taught trial practice to uh, third-year law students at Yale or at University of Maine, they were very receptive to constructive criticism, unlike the, some of the people at Yale. But um, um, I thought it was, I think it was an excellent experience, and uh, I was very proud um, of them. I was very happy to help, and um, I'm very pleased that they were able to go to a national competition like this. They did seem to, I think you went against California first. Yeah. Sort of like going against a small country in your first yeah. scrimmage. But um, um, I, I do see some excellent budding lawyers there. And hopefully if I keep helping with them, um, they'll decide not to go into law and become something useful. But yeah, you guys did a great job. I was very, very pleased to help. And um, I do want to thank Mary Page and Dick O'Meara who put in an unbelievable amount of hours far beyond whatever small stipend Mary gets and the no stipend that Dick gets. It is an enormous task, both of them, and, um, and for all of you as well. And, uh, I and the school board and Cape are very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Let them... Clear. We'll wait just a moment prior to moving <clears throat> on. We will move on now to item um, 5D, Presidential Scholar, Jack <clears throat> Queenie. Huge honor. Yes, it is. And again, this is from um, Mr. Shedd. Jack is a senior and the valedictorian of his graduating class. During his years at Cape Elizabeth High School, Jack has been a quiet leader and an outstanding role model for all students. Last year, he was awarded one of the school's highest award a Citizenship Award for Leadership. Jack is a science and tinkering geek. I mean that in the most respectful way. Who has led our school science and robotics team for four years. Among his friends, it is well known that Jack keeps odd hours when he gets his mind on figuring out a problem, and they occasionally receive calls from Jack at unusual times because he wants to talk and share. In addition to his geeky side, Jack is an accomplished athlete, anchoring our defense in soccer, and this year starting on defense on the school's lacrosse team. Jack has recently been honored as one of only 141 presidential scholars in the country. Being selected as a presidential scholar is the most prestigious award for education in this country. 
there are only two scholars from the state of Maine. Presidential scholarship status is determined by academic excellence and involvement in school and community activities at a level of creativity and passion that makes, um, that makes scholars a small group of America's finest minds and finest young people. We are thrilled for Jack, who will be attending, appropriately enough, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the fall. Each presidential scholar gets to nominate one teacher who has had the most influence on him to attend a scholar conference and award ceremony in Washington, D.C. Jack has nominated chemistry teacher Doug Worthily to attend with him. My highest congratulations to Jack Queenie for receiving this presidential scholar award. Quite an honor. It's a huge honor and um, I think the last time a uh, Cape resident received this award was 2006, Bethany Roy, I believe. Um, so it's been quite a while and um, our um, huge congratulations um, go to Jack. He is an extraordinary individual and I, I don't think um, we'll see another one like Jack in a long time. Those of you who know him um, know uh, his integrity, his um, passion for learning, um, but most importantly, he is just a compassionate, um, good human being. And so um, I'm thrilled that he got this award, and um, congratulations to Jack. Uh, anything else? Anyone else like to make a comment? How do you top that one? I know. It's about as big as it gets. Um, we will move on then to item 6A. Uh, we have a resignation. You have a resignation from a high school teacher, Carrie Curtis. Okay. Any comments around that or just we have a resignation? Yeah, Kerry's got an interesting uh, position. He's going to be teaching at an international school in China. Um, that's why he is leaving us. Mm -hmm. He'll be missed. He will be missed. He'll be missed. Yeah, Kerry is an institution, but we wish him well. Um, and look forward to hearing how his, his uh, new position goes. Okay, we will move on then to item seven, new business. 7A, consideration to approve a proposed April t um, 2012 um, EF tour to Madrid and Andalusia from Lisa and Jack Melanson. I think the background information in the packet is self-explanatory. Um, I don't think there's anything unusual about this trip, it's similar to others that uh, you have seen. So, okay. are there any questions? I'll is this just to approve the uh, participation or is there a, a cost element they're requesting to prove I couldn't they included the price, but was that just for illustrative purposes? Yes, okay. the cost is borne by the students. That's a good, good point to make public. Right. Um, if the cost is borne by the students, though, does this fall under, um, Kathy, do you think this falls under the um, fundraising of, I think it's a $30,000 trip. Is that right? Oh, I didn't look at that. Let me look. Again. If it is, we would have time to bring that back to the okay. board because it's the request for next day. Next day. I was just thinking we could I probably does. get it a good point. all done in one, one motion if possible. But, um, How many students? I do you have the, the paper, David? No, I just have a couple of questions. I do have the papers, but um, it, it just seems a bit sparse, and I had some questions. I, I kind of wish that... Um, one of the Melanchthons were here. I mean, is this open to all students? You know, what is the cost for students? When are they going to be going? It has uh, been in it the past, it does, David. It does say. It, most of the information is it's in on this, here. right here. It's like it's $1,900 per student. 
Well, mine was cut off. I couldn't tell. Yeah, it's right down here. Yeah, mine. That's the program, the itinerary. That's the program fee. It's the itinerary, right? Is it like Spanish class? Uh, just, or all no, just, I think it's open to all students. Right. Yep. It's just a foreign, you know, it's a trip that um, Jack and Lisa have done in the past, have mm -hmm. taken um, students over to Europe um, as part of um, the break. And I don't believe it falls under uh, the amount required for our approval for fundraising. So I'm just curious, when, when, which break will they be going over? April. Any other questions or concerns? All right. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, yes. I move that we approve the proposed April 2012 EF tour to Mad Madrid and Andalusia from Lisa and Jack Melanson as described in our packet. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. All right, we will move on to item um, 5B, or 7B, I'm sorry. Um, consideration of the following policies for first reading. Uh, do I have a motion? Yes, um, I'd like to move that we approve. I'm going to say all three of them, and then we can discuss them individually if you'd like, or would you like to do them individually? Uh, do we have um, anybody for any for one, have, um, the comments other? or questions? Is it okay to do them as a group? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I move that we approve <laughs> policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings, policy DF, and just as a side, DFR fundraising, and policy EHA, which is a new policy electronic signature and filing. And you may recall that I pulled the JLCA. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion about any of the items? No. Do you, I'll, or the two do you want me to go over the changes? Sure. Or? But Why don't up, we do it for the record? The, okay. Um, on policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings, we have added um, a paragraph that replaces a paragraph. The second paragraph will now read, in order that the board may fairly and adequately discharge its overall responsibilities, citizens or groups wishing to address the board on a topic not otherwise on the agenda must submit a request in writing to the superintendent at, le at least one full week in advance of the scheduled meeting. The superintendent and or board chair may add the item to the agenda at their discretion. And it replaces the um, prior paragraph. And that's the only change in that one. Um, policy DF fundraising, we have added a sentence that um, identifies what fundraising is as it's come up in the past from um, groups. We've added the sentence, fundraising is the selling of a product, providing a service or activity, or requesting donations. School fundraising, direct, school fundraising directly funds school programs and students. This is an um, answer to questions that groups have had that if we write a check, does that mean it's fundraising? And the answer is yes, it is. Uh, and this dovetails into the school board's need to know when there are large amounts being fundraised. And um, also, in DFR, which is the Administrative Procedure for Fundraising, paragraph C, you will see that we have added this $20,000 amount allows the Cape Elizabeth School Board to evaluate the level of financial commitment being asked of Cape Elizabeth citizenry, including but not limited to parent groups, booster, and community members. Uh, that's again so that there's clarification. And I saw there's a typo. I'll have that fixed. And the last um, policy is policy EHA, which is electronic signature and filing. You may know that um, Jeff Shedd and um, Gary Lenoy have been working on not only the policy but the procedure, which will make it a lot easier for the schools 
to be able to gather um, electronic signatures from parents on various forms. If you're a parent, you know that there's a million of them that come at you at the beginning of school and various other times. So they don't have this up and running, but they are getting closer. So in the meantime, we have put together a policy that will cover this. Um, these policies are all here for first reading. So if you have comments about uh, content or concerns, um, you can let me know um, tonight. You can come to policy meeting. Um, if there's typos, maybe you could just send me a little note because um, I don't think anybody cares about talking about the typos. So, <laughs> um, I do have a couple of comments. I can either um, tell them to you generally now or if you tell me, email me on one of the next um, policy committee meets, I can tell me. They're not significant. It's just I think some of the language could be a, a bit tighter at least in my opinion, and maybe an exception or two made. I mean, just generally speaking, public participation at meetings, you say, must submit at least one week in advance. I would think we would want to be, the board would want to be able to grant an exception. Like, for example, the mock trial team wouldn't have been added to today. They had to submit their request one week in advance. So. Well, you notice that it says the superintendent and or board chair may add the item to the agenda at their discretion. Right, but that doesn't modify the previous sentence. That simply says they make the request, and then when we can advance, and then we can add or subtract it in our discretion. It still has to be made when we can advance. I'd be glad to talk to you about this. Yeah, I think that the, the intent of that was that the superintendent or the board chair could add it at the last minute, but we can modify that sentence to I mean, be clear. I just have, maybe it's because my drafting skills, I, I see things that I think I know what you're getting at, but just copy me on the next email as to when the policy committee is not trying to make it. Yep. That would probably be easier. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions, concerns? And actually, we're not approving these. This is just a first so reading. We so, we, yeah, we don't need to vote. Okay. Okay. Well, then let's move on to item number C. Um, consideration to approve the following job description. Superintendent of Schools. Okay, do you want to? Sure. Um, in your packet, you will find a superintendent job description that was uh, reviewed and approved by the Human Resource Committee. Um, and there's not s any substantial changes. And I was looking through. I don't know that we've lined anything, but I would defer to Ken if he recalls anything substantial. Or did we? No. So it's very similar to what we already have. And I'm, I would, excuse me, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the job description in your packet um, listed as revised 412 of 2011 for the superintendent. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Right. Any discussion, questions? Is, it, is this um, in our superintendent search, have we been using this description or do we not include a job description? We don't. We don't? We have not included the job Okay, so we're not going to be in conflict. Okay, mm -mm. that's all I need to know. Mm -mm. <coughs> Any other questions, concerns? <coughs> all right, all those in favor? Thank you. All right, um, item number D, consideration to approve the following staff nomina nominations for 2011-2012. Ken? Yes, the hiring season. I'll have four or five at your next meeting as well. Oh. Um, you have quite a bit of background information on each of these candidates for, for the benefit of the public. Let me just send an abstract about each one. Uh, Nancy Murray is, is the recommendation for middle school music, and Nancy um, received her Bachelor's of Music Education from the University of Maine in Orono. Um, after completing her student teacher internship in the Wyndham School Department, Nancy began substituting regularly in that district and then spent nine years in the business field in a variety of settings and then she returned to a career in music. Since that time, Nancy has been a middle school classroom 
teacher in, at Westbrook, um, where she has a teaching assignment very similar to ours. She comes to us from Westbrook with the highest of recommendations. The nomination for the fifth, sixth grade teacher is Laura Briggs. Um, this is a fifth, sixth grade looping classroom of language arts and social <coughs> studies. Laura earned her Bachelor of Arts in Geography from Middlebury College, then went on to MIT where she earned a degree in city planning. She later earned her master's degree in instructional learning from the University of Pittsburgh. Laura has taught grades two, three, and five in South Portland for the past three years. She's a resident of Cape Elizabeth, and again, she comes with glowing recommendations from the South Portland school system. Uh, another middle school teacher, Daniel Hunter. Um, Daniel received her Bachelor's of Science Education from Western Illinois, uh, where she minded in literacy. She went on to earn her Master's of Science in Curriculum Instruction from Concordia University. Uh, she has uh, extensive experience teaching in the Jacksonville, Florida, and in Wilmette, Illinois. Um, she is not a stranger to our schools because she substituted for one of our teachers for an extended period of time. And again, she comes highly recommended from both the Jacksonville and the Wilmette experience. The last one tonight is Catherine Bach. Um, Catherine uh, is presently the department head uh, of science at Lincoln Academy, and she's held that position since 1998. Uh, she's also taught a year at the University of Delaware. She has a Master's of Science from the University of Delaware and her Bachelor's from Dickinson. And again, like the others, uh, rave reviews from Lincoln. Any questions? Ken, is the, um, the music teacher, the middle school music teacher, is this a new position or did I miss a resignation? Um, no, the middle school teacher went to um, Hong Kong. Oh, great. At a retirement. Great, thank you. That's... Anyone else? Just one quick question on the last one. Um, I'm trying to find it. Um, well, I think I found it. Um, so she was interviewed by the science department, or somebody at the science department in high school? Yeah, all of our interviews are team interviews, including, which usually include the principal and several teachers. Of, of the particular area the teacher's going into? Okay. And then, um, with all the, the general principles, as I think you articulated uh, in a executive committee meeting, is that the, the goal is we're not hiring somebody or not continuing to hire somebody unless your rule is that they will provide you know, excellent teaching, not just good, but excellent. Right, right, right. right. Are you really looking for people that will add value mm -hmm. and do it quickly? I think you've got a good group here. Thank you for the information. Yeah. Anyone else? No? Do I have a motion? I, I'll move uh, to approve by the following staff nominations for 211 2011-12, Nancy Murray, Laura Briggs, Danielle Kunit, Kunit mm -hmm. and Catherine Bach uh, for the position set forth in uh, 7D of our agenda. Okay. Thank you. Second. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Great. Thank you. All right, we will move on to item E, consideration to approve proposal regarding non-union employee salaries and benefits. Um, do I have a motion? And then we'll save discussion. John. Um, uh, oh, it's, let's see. Well, I move that we approve the proposal. Is it in our packet? Uh, the superintendent's proposal for non-union non employee salaries and benefits. Okay. It, it, it set, it, it, is it one that's set forth in a um, memo entitled uh, Cape Elizabeth School Department 
Central Office Employee Survey and Maintenance Director and School Nutrition Director. So that's what we're voting on. It, it, it's not that. It's not that document that you're holding up. Actually, it's 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 a document that was presented to us in executive session. That the one you're holding up is a was a comparative, comparative, right. comparative survey, uh, but it's labeled classified employees. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Just a second. Okay. Discussion? Any discussion? Well, the, the, the other document that David mentioned is a survey of how these, how Cape Elizabeth non union uh, school department employees' salaries compare to those of our um, comparable districts. Um, and in, in most of these positions, um, Cape salaries are, are, are sort of right in the middle of the marketplace um, in terms of the, the, the proposed salaries. So, uh, for that reason, um, in, in, the, in that the, the, this proposal represents uh, paying market rate salaries for uh, these uh, employees, I would support the proposal. Mm -hmm. Could I just add to what John said that um, I think our role as a uh, school board is to look to comparable labor markets for what we pay people. Um, and, and we had an excellent summary done of um, looks like five other school systems for each one of these positions and on average um, and was comparing, trying to compare apples to apples in terms of the type of work they do prepared by Pauline and I, I think it's fair to say that uh, we're about in the middle of the fair market. We're not at the high end and not at the low end if you want an overall rough average. And I think we're proposing a 2% raise for these people. And I think that's uh, conservative and will still keep my, I still think that'll keep us competitive in the marketplace, which is what we need to do. So I support it. Okay. Anyone else? Any comments? All those in favor? So no. Thank you. Um, our next item, item F, is in addition to the agenda, and this concerns the Freedom of Information Act letter that the board will be sending to the legislature. Um, Kim or David, would you like to um, give a brief overview of that letter? Sure. Um, Tomorrow, the Legislature's Joint Committee on Judiciary will consider the following LD 1465, an act to amend the laws governing freedom of access. Uh, as members of the Cape Elizabeth School Board, we have uh, unanimously, unanimously um, uh, agree with the um, Main School Management, MSMA, in recommending that they um, defer the proposed bill to the Right to Know Advisory Committee for review, which basically encourages the Judiciary Committee to vote ought not to pass. Um, and um, briefly, um, we support the general concept of the Freedom of Access Act and its efforts to support a transparent government. We strongly believe the proposed initiatives, however, outlined in LD 1465 would not serve in the best interests of our state and local municipalities. The piece of legislation would create burdensome operating conditions, inhibit government functionality, and ultimately cause greater harm than good. So again, it is being considered in the uh, Judiciary Committee tomorrow, and we will be uh, sending this uh, letter with signatures for the Judiciary Committee to consider tomorrow. Could I add two <clears throat> things to that? In addition yes. to yeah. recommending that, uh, the reason why we're, we're recommending uh, ought not to pass is that the changes would impose substantial and almost impossible to comply with requirements. It would basically involve um, hiring at least probably half a person as uh, uh, someone who's involved in responding to the Information Act requests. It would require us to respond within 24 hours. It could be an oral request at a football thing on a Saturday and you have to respond by Sunday night. I mean, it's, it's really unnecessary given the fact that the 
existing Freedom of Information Act is one of the broadest, uh, most liberal statutes in terms of right of the public to access. That's fully protected in it. What we also uh, requested that uh, uh, that they put in they put in a little balance into the Freedom of Information Act request by um, protecting us against. Um, I guess you could compare it to protections given in normal litigation against burdensome or uh, frivolous type requests that we could refuse to, uh, this is what we suggest, create some sort of uh, standard by which if uh, we're being overly burdened or the, the request is frivolous, they would not respond to it. And in addition, to be able to charge um, uh, a certain, same thing as the federal law, charge a certain class of uh, uh, requesters, which are not newspapers, not educational facilities, not anything like that, but basically the actual cost of providing them the information, which would be a, um, you know, uh, 35 cents per page and up to $45 an hour of, of time, above two hours in work, which, quite frankly, um, we think is only fair given the fact that every time we spend money on this, we, we take it, that money comes from education or in the municipal side as well. It comes from the municipal side. And if it's a reasonable, appropriate, in fact, um, extremely extensive request, it's appropriate, we'd be happy to respond to it. We just want some consistent protection, which is given at the federal level. And uh, so that's what our recommendation is. Okay. Any other comments or concern to that? Thank you, Kim and David, for putting that together. We'll um, get that typed up and signed tomorrow then. Okay. Any committee reports? Kate? Teaching and Learning will have their social studies workshop on May 24th at the, uh, I believe, still at the library. That, that um, workshop, it hasn't been moved. I'm not sure. See the. So it'll be on, it'll be in our website. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Check the website. Check the website. Okay. So we're closing in on, on finishing looking at curriculum at this point. Um, it's maybe the second to last um, area that we're going to look at. Yep. Great. Yes. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Anybody else? If we can drag the meeting out a little bit longer. We could report on the uh, result of the budget referendum, but I think at this point. <laughs> no, I, I, th I think we want to break our previous record for the shortest meeting while David Hillman was on the board. I know. Well, you're going to have to. end it now, we could break the record. You're going to have to stop talking if you want us to. <laughs> well, maybe we could have David read one of his books. Uh, that's right. That's right. We'll well, filibuster. That's, that's <laughs> um, I will just report briefly on the superintendent search. Uh, the CRC met last week and went over the um, went over the applications, made some recommendations to the board. We are um, the board took those um, and made some decisions on semifinalists. We are in the interview process now and hope to have finalists um, decided upon. Uh, you know, hopefully within the next week or so, um, and then we'll start in a finalist round. Uh, we hope to have a final announcement by the end of June, or the end of May, beginning of June. That's our hope. So we're moving along, and um, we are very pleased with the quality of candidates, and um, hope to have someone to announce um, relatively quickly. So. Um, do we have any other committee reports? No? All right. Um, school board agenda requests for uh, the June agenda. Anyone? No? Um, announcements of upcoming meetings. I think Kate gave us the announcement for the workshop. And um, I, for all other meetings, I would suggest checking the website. So I think that ends our, and I think, actually, I think we're a little bit over time uh, from our record, that <laughs> about 10 minutes. It's um, your fault, Mary. I know. We've got June. I know. So um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Second? Kate? All those in favor? 7-0.
All right, so no. Thank you, everyone.